MSI GX740, part of the G-Series, MSI. Hello and welcome to my one week review of the MSI GX740. So, looking at the left hand side first, we have a DVD combo drive, two USB ports, an Ethernet uh, port, modem port, and a laptop lock. Switching over to the right hand side, at the bottom there, with the protective covers in, we have a 5-in-1 memory card reader and a PCI expansion slot. We then have a third USB slot, port even, eSATA port, firewire, and then four audio ports. The first one on the left is headphones, the two in the middle are expansion, um, extra input slots for speakers etc which is very good it allows this to become a really multimedia laptop and the final one on the right is a microphone port we then have one of the two graphics card uh, vents and grills the other one being on the back here so we have the graphics card grill this is of course for the ATI Mobility 5870 we have an HDMI port and a VGA out the battery is there at the back as long as, as with the power input. The battery does stick out a bit but that is not an issue and I can't particularly see it being one. So um, I'll just show you the trackpad here. Very responsive and um, no issues with it. You have a scroll here even. Uh, it doesn't actually show it there but it, it is there. It works very nicely. The buttons, some reviewers on other sites said that these stuck a bit or felt like they did. I can't say they did, it works very nicely, I've got no issues with it, you just get used to the feel of them. Now I will say you probably can see some fingerprints on here, the brushed al um, aluminium effect that they put on here. It does show your fingerprints but again, I can't complain, this thing cost me £899. You can now get it without an OS for 850 odd I think, but again, I don't care about fingerprints. <laughs> I'm a guy, not a girl man up. This is the MSI gaming mouse that came with it. Now I'll just show you the um, DPI level settings on it. So we've got three levels of DPI. When the light is not on in the middle it's running at 800. You press it once it's now running at 1600. Press it once more and it's up to its maximum of 3200 which is great for gaming. Simple left and right um, buttons on the top, mouse wheel, very nice and then you've got the forward and backward shortcuts for either when you're browsing or macroing in game. It's very useful. I'll just show you the MSI gaming bag that came with it as well. Here it is. Nice little backpack. And it can fit the whole laptop in there. Mind my dodgy camera work at the moment. Just while I show it to you. So it's nice and red on the inside. <laughs> yeah, that's basically it. It's got lots of pockets and stuff to shove all your map mice in, all your peripherals, etc. It's good stuff. So, showing you the keyboard briefly. You've got the red keys are highlighted for gaming. Enter button may be a bit small for some people's liking, but you get used to it. You've got a full numpad as well. And then we get to probably my favourite bit, which I'll just log in for. The multimedia touch sensitive pad along the top here. You have your general controls, fast forward, back skip, pull, uh, stop, pause and play, fast forward or next track. You then have what is undoubt undoubtedly a amazing feature and very useful feature on this laptop, eco mode which I'll come back to, as well as a cinema pro mode. You then have the webcam button which you just tap and the webcam enables itself. You have Bluetooth and you have the wireless which is near enough always on for me. That's a wireless end card in there so it's very fast, very stable. My speeds are very good with it. You then have the final button there which is called P1. That is a programmable button. I currently have that to, if I touch it, iTunes will load I think. Touch that. Yep, iTunes. So I'm just going to grab my chair so I can go over the temperatures that I've got up using the CPU ID hardware monitor. So the GPU core is currently running idle at 49 degrees. Just so it gives you kind of some sort of perspective, 
my GTS 250 on my desktop is running at 47 degrees. It generally runs at about 47 to 50 degrees idle, so that is not bad considering the two. Maximum it's ever gone up to that I've seen is 88 degrees, which is fine for a laptop. The processors, you can see they're 38, the 40, oh, no, they're going up. 48, 49, odd. It's probably because I just loaded up iTunes. They're skipping around, but generally they idle at those temperatures there, 32, 34, and generally lower as well, actually. So, those, uh, I'll come back now to the Cinema Pro. By hitting the Cinema Pro button here, you can see it comes on on screen. The circle on the right there was the volume control. It basically increases your volume without having to manually um, do it by pressing and holding uh, function and F8. It also apparently is meant to use a higher audio codec, so it should technically supply with better audio as well, which is, which is useful, I guess, if you're watching movies and stuff. But by far the most important button on here is the eco mode button, and I'll just show you the different processes of me pressing it. So press it once, it comes up gaming mode. Press it again, movie mode, presentation mode, office mode. Oh, sorry, I missed it there. So you've got presentation mode, office mode turbo battery mode. Now this is by far probably one of my favorite um, features so far. It's very very effective. With this I've been able to get three hours of just typing with it on the battery. It's very very useful. I can't actually show you the battery status at the moment obviously because it's um, it's on bat it's on the electric. So but to give you some idea of how well it runs. If you're going to be web surfing and checking out YouTube videos, you've got around two to two and a half hours of just typing. You're probably looking at about three hours. So it's pretty good actually for a laptop. Some reviewers, um, they didn't seem to take into account that obviously with a gaming laptop, they were saying, oh, it's shocking battery life if you're going to game with this thing. Well, of course it's going to be. It's a gaming laptop. There's so much power draw everywhere. You're not going to really want to game with this thing on the battery. You're going to, you're going to be wanting near a PowerPoint all the time. So I kind of think that a lot of reviews that marked it down for battery life in terms of gaming. I know obviously it is a gaming laptop, but most people would would never even think of trying to game without the um, power plugged in. So, and there are very few laptops on the market that can actually um, game to the max with a decent battery life. Although from what I've read, this thing I haven't actually tried it myself because I have no need. I always pay with the power in the battery life on this should be about an hour with gaming. It may be less obviously depending on what game you're playing. Okay so I'm just going to actually show you um, how this thing runs with a DVD. The choice of DVD at the moment is whatever I can find and that is a copy of the season 2 of The Big Bang Theory. If you haven't watched it I suggest you do, it's very very funny. So I'm just going to put that in the side, it's all in there. It should just load up straight away into a media player. I'm going to hit the Cinema Pro button and we will see what happens. So I'll just show you the keyboard while we wait for that to load up. Very nice keyboard. Um, the screen resolution, I should probably talk about that, it's 1680 by 1050 obviously not a full HD screen but this does allow obviously the price to be what it is and for it to be well more more capable I think at the current resolution so you were able to see me there hello mm. it's a very glossy screen I should mention that Gentlemen, I put it to you. The worst tapioca pudding is better than the best pudding of any other flavor. <laughs> First off, that is axiomatically wrong because the best... Oh dear, Sheldon. Anyway, um, I was saying the screen is quite glossy. It's shown even more when I'm recording right now. It's not actually that glossy 
when you're playing games, when you're watching DVDs, um, it, you don't notice it at all. It's not a problem, so don't worry about it if you're thinking, oh, it's really glossy. Using it outside, obviously you can't use it with the sun blaring down that you won't be able to see your screen. Um, but generally, who would go outside with a gaming laptop? <laughs> no, but seriously, they can be used outside, but you want a bit of shade to really use it in so you can have your brightness settings up. But that, of course, will counteract the, your battery life. Um, hmm. Not much more I really wanted to say besides showing you the webcam at the top here, which has its own little microphone, if uh, it will focus in properly on my camera. Yep, there it is. The microphone is alright. Um, it doesn't pick up too well, you have to add the microphone boost on quite a bit, but then you get a lot of background static. So generally it's best to use your headset or your microphone. Okay, apart from this I can't think of any other features that I need to mention. If there is anything you want me to specifically go over, please comment below and I will do that in a follow-up video. Right, time for pros and cons. Now I was talking about the screen resolution earlier, and 1680 by 1050 as its max resolution for me isn't a problem. There's no Blu-ray drive, so there is really no need for full 1080p. Playing games at that, one will impact on your FPS, playing at uh, a max out resolution. Also, if I'm honest, I don't think you'll particularly see a massive gain um, with full 1080p, except for Blu-rays and movies. Um, Gaming-wise, that resolution, everything will look a bit small on a 17-inch screen. Personally, I'm happy with this resolution. Again, it really does drop the prices, um, keeps this thing below £900 without the Blu-ray as well. So that's not an issue for me. If you're after Blu-ray, then obviously this laptop isn't for you unless you can get one with a Blu-ray drive. Now, for some of you, um, you can if you're in the USA, the standard model of this comes with an i7. If you can, go for an i7. Why not? They're powerful. They'll probably last you maybe slightly longer. Um, gaming, they're... This is a dual core, so technically more games are still running ha happily on dual cores. I haven't had an issue with this with uh, compared to, say, my quad core in my PC. Um, and my brother's i7, I've been te benchmarking and testing it against that. There are no issues there. Obviously, again, though, I would I, if I had the choice between an i7 and an i5, I'd probably go for an i5, i7 even. But um, obviously in the UK and most of Europe, you can only get an i5 version as standard unless you're buying it from a custom laptop shop. So let's go with some more pros here. The um, eco mode is very, very good. The, um, the switch in all the different functions there, very good for conserving battery life. And I have used it um, off the power a little bit, experimenting with that. It's very good. The keyboard is very responsive, as is the touchpad, the mouse that comes with it. Very enjoyable, very good. Um, the graphics card, the Mobility 5870, has near maxed all the games I've thrown at it with very respectable um, FPS rates. Benchmarks videos will be up very shortly of Crisis, Napoleon Total War, Company of Heroes, Bad Company 2, and I think someone wanted me to do Team Fortress 2. If you have any others that you want me to do that you saw from my list of games in my unboxing videos, please let me know. Oh, I've also got Dawn of War 2, which I can benchmark for you guys. Um, if you want to see um, Call of Duty uh, Modern Warfare 2, I can do that too. Um, I'm just really trying to think of other pros that people would generally include in a review. I, I really, this laptop, I can just fully praise it. It's for the, Again, I keep coming back to this point probably, but for the price, this is a fantastic laptop. You will be hard pushed to find anything better. Maybe some of you don't like the red trim around the side. You, you'd live with it. I mean, for the spec in here, you've got 4 gig of DDR3 RAM. You've got a huge 640 gig hard drive. You've got wireless N nice 17 inch screen, you've got uh, one of the fastest mobile GPUs in the world right now and a very decent mid-level um, i5 mobile processor in here as well. Cons, maybe for those of you that don't like fingerprints they will show up a bit so if that's really your game either you need to spend some more money or you just need to get a cleaning cloth and wipe them off afterwards they do go away quite easily other cons that I'm trying to think of um, desperately before I run out of time for this video. Um, maybe you guys heard a couple of days ago I was getting a blue screen. I fixed that with a fresh install of Windows, which again, credit to MSI, there's a great OS recovery feature in this laptop. If you want to hear more pros and cons or you want to say, oh, how does it handle this and find out if it is a con or not, comment below. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope I haven't rambled too much. Comment, rate, and subscribe.